Hey Shop Crafters, thanks for joining in for another video. Today I want to talk to you about um, off-grid lighting and not necessarily in terms of off-grid, you know, the zombie apocalypse is coming, but let's just say that uh, you lose power due to a hurricane, uh, snowstorms, nor'easters, wherever you live, tornadoes, outages, and so on. Um, Dietz lanterns are really inexpensive. You can get the Chinese knockoffs at Walmart for a few bucks. You can get the replacement at Wix. You can get the lamp oil and everything for probably, you know, all said and done. I think uh, the lamp oil, um, the paraffin style is about $7. You get uh, about $7 on a Dietz style lamp and uh, you can be in business uh, running. So, so I'd say under 15 bucks, you know, with 20 bucks if you want to keep it that way. Uh, you can be up and running for quite some time. You can run kerosene in them. You can they do sell a clean burning kerosene as well. What I have here is actually a Model 11 Aladdin lamp. I want to talk to you about how not to get beeped up the beep when you go to an antique store when it comes to Aladdin lamps. Uh, Lehman's catalog does sell a lot of the replacement parts, but not for the uh, like the sixes, the tens, the elevens, and so on. So the 23 is the most popular. I happen to be one of those guys who likes to uh, use old things if I can, um, you know, old tractor, uh, old implements, old axes, restoration. It's just part of the, the appeal of shrub crafting. So this lamp I got for a wonderful, wonderful, fabulous steal of like $120. And you guess, some of you may be knowing lamps say, wow, it's not that great a deal. Well, you can get a, I believe, Chinese produced Aladdin uh, or overseas produced Aladdin. Uh, from Lehman's for about 169 I believe, out the door with the mantle and everything. You can, for about 189 or so, you can get the Model 23 um, with a, I believe, two-year, what they call their two-year replacement kit. So this is a Model 11. And right here, I have another Model 11. Some of you may be like, why do you need two Model 11s? Well, I want to tell you, this Model 11 right here, which is gorgeous, again, vintage, you know, all that nostalgia. And I can finally turn this one up a little bit. Uh, not quite. It's about as high as it's going to go right there. So, staring into this, extremely bright. I think we got uh, Shrub Kitty Isis coming in. The mantles are very fragile, so just even moving this, I can see that sliding around. So on the Model 11 is what's different from the 23. The 23 has the new style mantle that just drops in place. Uh, the older models actually require what's called a cone adapter and that cone adapter just allows the new style of mantle. Let me pull one out here. The new styles of mantles to be used. So the neat thing about the Aladdin lamp is that it uses a round wick. Prior to that, Rayo lamps actually used the central draft which was uh, older than the Aladdin came with one of the first and brightest uh, lamps. They're actually double wick that split, it's a single tube that splits down on the side. These use a mantle with a tube wick that very similar design, not quite as big as a rail. So these tend to produce a lot of heat. They do produce a lot of uh, warmth, like not just heat in terms of you can catch something on fire, but also a lot of warmth. So right now there's a lot of heat coming off this. These are highly sought after lamps for people who are prepping um, or just want to use the ambiance in your home, in our case, the uh, cabin uh, that we built. So we are off grid, there is no electricity there, and I don't really feel like paying a couple thousand dollars to have uh, a line put in anytime soon. Solar is always an option, but uh, part of the joy of shrub crafting is to get away from everything. So this lamp I picked up for, I believe, $126 from a very well known uh, arch um, antique archaeologist, per se. Uh, there's an antique road show which is on TV. I don't know where it airs, uh, but she is one of the guest speakers. So when I purchased this, knowing what of 23 kind of entailed, I looked it over real well. I trusted her, took her advice, and she says everything's working. Well, everything wasn't there. So my $126 lamp, which I always never assume something old is going to be working, uh, turned into quite the project, which is why this one has come into the picture. So let's turn this down. So for any of these lamps to work, other than a single wick style, this central tube takes the wick right over the top. 
there's this little knob, which is your wick razor, and inside goes a wick razor. This attaches over little tabs on the side of the wick, which uh, I do not have a spare, sorry. Uh, I can pull this one. So on the all Aladdins, as far as I know, the top comes off in one piece once your mantle is there for lighting. You want to be very careful with this so as not to damage the mantle. So this assembly requires to be burned properly a cone adapter under there. That cone adapter is a little brass ring uh, that fits in place because the old style 11 mantles used to lock into the tabs. So this gives you a replacement tab, sets it a little higher so that you can utilize this. So this is a replacement that works just as well. This is actually on a hanging Model 11. So I'm gonna set this down. So that, uh, you can't actually take the top off, pull the mantle off, why don't we do that on this one? The reason I'm doing this is I've yet to see a Model 11 video that's worth anything for me, so I've had to learn this as I go. So here's the top. This one actually has nice recessed tabs in the bottom. Here, see if I can get this off, is your mantle. And down inside of here, you can see kind of the, the little outline. And this is part of the burner assembly that kind of helps diffuse flames from going back and everything. And there's a technical term for this, and I'm not sure what it is. So this assembly, once assembled, usually does not get taken apart. And that cone adapter for $9 from Lehman's sits right on top of here, which is in this one. This is actually a, a either a well-crafted aftermarket, uh, but it allows this just to sit right on top. So I don't believe it's going to need the cone adapter. I may be wrong in that. This is uh, this one was purchased to help kind of fund the other one. I've since found some other parts, so it will be burning shortly. So this burner assembly, the reason this one is off and this one has one is I was fortunate enough to find somebody on eBay who was specializing in the older parts and for an 11, which is extremely hard. Uh, hence the reason everyone's using 23s. So this burner assembly has your wick, and these thread into your base. The way this one came was with this assembly, just like that. You, and you actually need a piece that sits on top once this wick assembly is in place, and that is called the inner wick tube assembly. And it is part of the burner assembly, which you have to have if you don't want flame ups and you don't want to burn and char your mantle. And that sits right on here. This one is missing the inner assembly because I put it on here to test this one. And luckily, the person who had this assembly for me also has that inner wick assembly. So I will be able to get both of these up and running shortly. So this wick rises up and down. And there's little tabs on the side of your wick, which you'll see. You can see right in here that this assembly catches on. This is a spare for this one or this one just in case. So I'm now set up that I have some spares. This riser arm though, was the teeth were not engaging on the up and it also came with a 23 um, wick on, which was the wrong size, which caused some problems and bent the teeth. And there's also a little mini burner in here and it usually says model 11. This is an aftermarket that somebody put in. Well, it doesn't quite fit, so it needs to be tapped out from the inside. A little uh, dowel will do that, but they normally just pop right out. And by saying pop right out, they should come out just like this. And this is a little assembly inside that fits, and this one does say Model 11. Hopefully you can see that. And then down inside is just the center. So assembled, it bottoms out, whereas this one was forced past the difference. And this wick assembly now goes down and it rises up. You don't need very much to produce this type of light. I've backed this way off. And Lehman's on their website has a video about uh, filling these. You fill them and you wait one hour. Uh, and you have to let this soak up everything so that you can even char on top. And then uh, once you light these, you want them to glow approximately just till the whole bottom starts to light up and glow. And then you let it sit there for about 10 minutes and it will kick in. And as the Lehman's guys tell you, it's like a hot uh, race car. You gotta fire it up and it's gonna warm up and once it gets running, it's good to go. So that is a basis 
the, the basic operation. So when you're looking for these as antiques or for you know prepping or in our case off grid, you need to make sure that there is a burner inner tube assembly that goes on here and fills that. Once this cools, I'll try to get that uh, a picture of that assembly for us. You want to make sure that the riser teeth go up and down. In my case, I was able to lower it. I didn't attempt to rise it. You know, I was thinking everything was good and trusting that an antique shop uh, that's in business would be giving me some uh, good information. I highly recommend you disassemble it. Make sure that the threads are clean and you can disassemble it. You want to make sure that your fill knob works and you want to make sure that there's no holes in it. So by turning this over, again, this is a hanging version of the pedestal style. So this can get hung up into a special stand. Yeah, I'll look for a stand uh, and I hopefully we'll find one one day. So you fill them, put them in, drop your wick in. When I put the wick in, you put one on each side. Gently, because these are antiques, and I believe these were only made from like 1920 to 26, somewhere in there, for the Model 11s. You assemble it, a new wick is installed, and you just drop that into the tabs and go up and down, and it does give you directions on the box. And it shows you how to use those. Go until it stops, that's it. You would place that inner assembly on top right here. You would take your mantle portion, set the mantle on. If you are putting your mantle on for the first time, they come out blue. They're very fragile. Just like the Coleman lanterns, once you burn them, they're very fragile. So, let's see if I can get this one. I will pull it out this far. It is blue. Once you put them in place, you get a match, and they, without touching, you set the match just over this central ring, and it flames up, puts a flame out a couple inches high, and that mantle is cooked, ready to fire. I'm going to lower this and slowly let this try to burn itself out. To properly extinguish any of these, especially the rayos, something I learned as well, with the rayo, which we'll do a video on once I'm back up at the property, the rayos using a slightly different sized chimney, when you blow them out in a traditional by putting your hands like this and blowing, that cold differential typically results in a slow or a rapid temperature change difference which will crack your chimneys. Try it, it will work for you. I cracked mine the very first time I used it. I ordered a replacement. Luckily they do make them for about $12, $13. So this assembly goes on nice and easy again because you don't want to damage that mantle. And once that's in place, you tighten this one down, again, hand tight only, and you are ready to go. So in terms of lighting it, you would light it prior to assembling that. And then you come up just like the Lehman's website, which is for a 23. Um, you're just going to slowly rotate it up. Buying replacement parts on a Model 11, they're hard to come by. I had some trouble locating them, but once I did, I bought them up. So once this is reduced and it's burning low, you can come up and extinguish it just like a standard lamp. So model, model 11 things to look for. Chimney, they're probably going to be a replacement. You're going to need the mantle chimney assembly. Underneath there you are going to need the burner that works up and down. Those little gearings, my gearing does not work down. So I can take this apart. It's very sensitive. It's riveted in. You'll have to do some work to rivet and resolder those pieces and connections if I want to make it work. Burner assembly, inner burner uh, cone, which is necessary to do that. Wicks can be bought at Lehman's uh, under uh, the 1 through 11 category or 1 through 12 category. Put that on, and then you have your base. You're not looking for any dings, dents, or scratches. So 
Hope this helps somebody. I could not find any video on a Model 11 with all the componentry, so I knew what I was getting. Uh, when I bought this one off of eBay, and in comparison, a hanging one with a brand new uh, chimney it says Aladdin. The old ones did not say Aladdin, as far as I know, on the vintage vintage. Probably wrong on that. Has some of the repro parts, which is great for me, but it also came with the German patent paper. And it also has the front uh, paperwork that went along with it when they sent that in. So those are the things you're looking for when you buy these. All right, this is slightly cool enough to the touch. I've got a piece of metal here I will set this on. Let's see. Where am I going to be able to? There we go. Okay, so there is the inner assembly and you must have that in order to run these so shrub crafters i hope you learned something i know i did um, antiques are always one of those hit or miss things antique restorations are always something there i was looking for a user one uh, and it definitely uh, it was not in the way that it came so all said and done uh, another $13 for the one mantle. I bought two just to make sure. Uh, I ordered some extras anyway because once I start utilizing these, I needed a, another burner assembly. Cost me 20 bucks to have one that went up and down, which came with the right parts. However, was missing the inner tube section, so that is going to be another $12, which he is sending me. Um, and then 46 bucks here, so I could get this one up and running. So all said and done, if we do the math, probably $220. So I could have uh, easily bought a brand new one, even one of the American-made ones or English-made ones, um, and not. Oh, and I forgot this part. So we're probably 250 in the two lamps. Divide that up. I'm 125 bucks into vintage lamps. This one is 90% original, and this one is a combination. So they're going to put out a lot of light. They're going to be put to a lot of good use. Our safety is first, last, and always. Fire extinguishers at your property uh, when you're traveling. You definitely need one with oil lamps, especially if you have shrub cats and shrub dogs around with you. Uh, they can go up very quickly. So hope this helps. Hope I didn't ramble too much for you, and I hope you actually learned something. So that is the Aladdin Model 11. Thanks for tuning in. Remember Red Eagle Trapping. That's me, Aaron, and uh, Shrub Junkie. So hope you learned something. Stay safe.